to check the size of diaper that you need, you're going to need to measure your dog. And you measure around the narrowest part of its waist. And we're just going to say that's 15. You don't want this to be real tight. Just loosely measure around the narrow part of your dog's abdomen. Okay, so for this size, I'm going to need the small. And for extra, extra small, extra small and small, those three lower sizes, you can actually use one fat quarter for the outer fabric. And <clears throat> I've already got this pinned, the fat quarter and my flannel fabric, which is a quarter of the a yard cut the, the fat way. If you're, if you're not using a fat quarter, then you're going to need a half a yard for this size. And I've got, this one was in three pieces, and I've taped them together and then put them on the fabric on the fold. The two folds are right there. The black line goes on the fold. Now, before I put it on the fabric, though, I made sure that I had the exact dimensions that it was supposed to be. When you print it out, you'll see a little square that should be printed out one inch. So if that box measures an inch, then your scale is correct. And once you get all the pieces put together, you can compare this inch amount and this inch amount measured this way. So you'd be measuring from this corner over to this edge, this outer edge of the, fab the pattern, and that would measure X number of inches. And then to measure the length, you would start here and go all the way down here. And that should equal this Y dimension. So check that before you cut it out. This little piece is just a, a page for reference only. It is not a pattern piece. And I provide one of these with each of the six sizes of diaper patterns. Now you'll notice that there are three notches. There's one here, one here, one here, cutting on a fold, and then there's a dot down here. You'll only mark this spot on the inside of your outer fabric. You can do that with chalk or any kind of marker. Marker for fabric, that is. Okay, so I've got my two pieces. I have pressed the tail hole extensions under on both of these pieces. They're pressed toward the wrong side. And you can see these marks that I've made. I've also cut my elastic. Each pattern will call for one long piece of, of one quarter inch elastic and one short piece of quarter inch elastic. And I'll show you a few steps where those are used. Now we're working with the right side of your flannel or inside fabric. And you're going to take the long piece of elastic and pin it in the middle between these two notches. And then you're going to take the elastic and hold it even with that side edge there and hold it in the middle. Now you're going to stretch this to a half an inch beyond and then pin that in place. Now remember this is the right side of the inner fabric. Now we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're just going to zigzag right there and it's supposed to bunch up in the middle like this. 
We take that middle pin out. But we're just going to zigzag right here and right here. Okay. Got that zigzag between the notches there. Now we're going to put the right sides together and pin matching the notches. And we're going to stitch all the way around except for leaving between these two marks open. Okay, here's what we have so far. Now, what we want to do is we're going to clip these curves that go inward. We're going to clip these curves, just <laughs> clipping into almost to that line and stopping. We do not cut the line. And then we're going to notch where we're going to clip here at these marks at the end of our stitching. And then we're just going to notch these outward rounding curves so that when we turn it inside out, it will lay flat and not be bulky. And you're cutting close to, but not cutting that stitch line. Alright, so we're going to do the same, then notch this corner too, and we're just going to go ahead and clip. here we want to go to the iron and we want to we want to press this open seam allowance we just want to press it so that it's laying flat while they're open okay so I've pressed this these seam allowances open don't worry too much about the tail hole we're going to work with that once we turn it right side out at this point we want to take this elastic and we're going to hold firm at that notch and then stretch the elastic as much as it will go to down to this notch and hold that there and pin it into pin it onto the seam allowance Do the same thing on this other side. Okay? And it's supposed to be bunching up just like this. And we want to also take the little short piece. Your pattern will call for one long piece and one short piece of elastic. We're going to pin the short piece at the other end at the notches. We're going to hold that and we're going to stretch this as far as it will go and then it will pin at this notch. And I'm going to zigzag in the seam allowance. I'm just going to zigzag right across that elastic in this place, here, here, and here. Okay, here's what we have. And now we're just going to trim off this elastic about a fourth of an inch from where you zigzagged. Now we're going to trim these corners, not quite to that stitching. And you may want to just trim that seam allowance in half. And it might make it easier to work with if you just trim this seam allowance a little as well. Okay. Now we're 
are ready to turn it right side out. Okay, to turn it right side out, we're just going to reach into this opening and turn all these long edges, just push them, push them through, and then turn the whole thing right side out. Okay, you may need to use something like a chopstick, or if you have something that's a a pushing tool made specifically for pushing it. You can use this to push out these corners all the way to the end and kind of round, be sure you round out these bottom corners. Now this piece of elastic is supposed to be exposed like this and that is to help keep any um, absorbent pad in place when, the, when it's on the dog. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get this elastic that we sewed into the top exactly along that inside seam. So you're just going to stretch that and work with it a little bit at a time and pin it into place. going to do the exact same thing on these sides and these are going to be this is going to be the elastic that holds the holds it up close under the dog's belly and then these elastics are going to be around the leg holes we're just stretching that out to smoothly get that elastic along that seam on the inside and pin it as we go. Make sure that that elastic is right there. And what I'm doing is I'm stretching it and then I'm holding it to that stretched point and then clamping down on it there and then pinning through the elastic and continuing all the way to where it pops out right here. Okay, so I've got one leg hole there. making sure that I'm feeling that elastic right there. Just now we're gonna just loosely pin the rest of it. So that you're folding exactly on that seam. Now we're ready to do the top stitching and we're gonna we're gonna start we'll start up here and we're only gonna do a quarter inch from that edge all the way around but now when you get to these elasticized areas I'll show you on the machine I'll show you I'll film it as I'm doing this we're gonna we're gonna hold it flat And we're, and we're going to let it just feed through the machine. 
naturally. We're not going to pull this way or that way. We're just going to hold it flat and let it feed through. And you'll see what I'm talking about in just a moment. Okay, now we're, we've got this pinned, and we're going to do a 1 fourth inch top stitching from the edge all the way around. Okay, now we're at the first elasticized stretch and this we have to we have to treat a little differently now what we're going to do is we're going to hold hold this end up here firmly and we're going to pull this area flat a little a little stretch at a time You can see this is flat right here, so we can sew across it. So just go very slowly and stop and remove the pins as you come up to them. It's critical that you don't pull against the needle or pull with your other hand. You're, you're going to just pull it flat and you're going to allow the fabric to just glide under the feed dog normally. You're just going to let the fabric just slide through like it normally would without you holding it. Okay, stopping to take the pen out. Don't be intimidated by this. It sounds like it's really hard to do, but it's not. Just take your time and do a little stretch at a time. You're just going to pull it out to where it's flat and the feed dogs can just pull it right underneath your presser foot normally. Just go very, very slowly. Okay, now we're going to stop one fourth of an inch from the end and pivot on this little tab. Raise the presser foot, pivot, stitch to one within one fourth of an inch on this side. Raise the presser foot, pivot, and continue. can see how beautifully those leg stretches, leg holes, are elasticized. And then up this part will go under the dog's tummy and snugly fit. Alright, now it's time to work on the tail hole. And we've already pressed this down, so all we need to do is just Make sure that they're turned under all these little tabs and pin. And then we're going to stitch around this hole about an eighth inch from the outer edge. Okay, I've got the tail hole 
pinned together. And I'm going to just top stitch around about a one eighth from one eighth inch from that raw edge or from that folded edge. I put the tail through the hole first and then you're going to bring these tabs around and velcro them around the dog's middle. So this part is going to be on the dog's back facing up. So we're going to use the hook part of the velcro. And the hook part is the hard scratchy side. So that's going to go right here. So what we want to do is we want to kind of round off round that off and so that it doesn't extend out and then we're going to round this edge off and then we're going to trim that little corner off because that's kind of sharp. All right, so that's going to go right here. And like I said, this is going to be facing away from your dog, away from the dog's back. So that's why we're putting the, the scratchy side here. And these tabs that are going to come from underneath the dog are going to be down. Now, you might be attaching it with just that much Velcro and, and so some of the Velcro will be exposed. That's why we want to use the soft Velcro or the loop side of it, the soft fuzzy one because think soft on soft. You don't want the scratchy side touching your dog's back at any point. So we're going to cut this in half. And we're just going to slightly trim those corners and make them round just a little bit. All right, on, on both pieces. Now these will go on these flannel tabs on the inside of the diaper. And you want to get that up close to the edge and just pin it into place. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the sewing machine and all we're going to do is we're going to stitch right along the edge of this Velcro all the way around with a, a, a small stitch and just do a uh, forward and backward to lock your stitches and then we're going to do the same thing on this piece, stitching from this side about an eighth of an inch around and then we're finished. <laughs> 